why the Mi 11, why the Mi 11 Ultra was a great upgrade from the Mi 10 Pro. Now, let me say this real quick. I know many of you out there, especially in this country, the U.S., it's all about Samsung, Apple, and Google. LG has left the building a long time ago. And OnePlus. And really not so much OnePlus, only because they don't advertise in this country, which I think is a huge mistake for them. They would probably sell way more devices if they did some type of marketing. But they do zero marketing in this country. It's all Samsung, Apple, and Google. That's it. Okay, Huawei used to be, they never advertised over here, but at least they were able to sell their devices here. But, you know, they got banned, unfortunately. So then the next um, manufacturer I found out about was Xiaomi. And I only found out about Xiaomi through my man, Flossie Carter, when he did a review on the Mi 10 Pro. And I'm going to say this. He was so excited and gave this phone a major 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 go he was absolutely right to do that because this is an awesome device if you didn't pick it up you should have now some of you may say i don't the reason why i don't mess with chinese phones because of the spy um they, they spying on me and all that look man i don't know about all of that so if, i mean if that's the way you feel that's the way you feel i'm not telling you to feel any different but that stuff don't concern me. Some may say it's because of the bloatware. Not an issue for me because you can delete or disable some of that stuff. But most of the time, it stays out of my way. It's not an issue for me, okay? Because both of these are Chinese ROMs. Neither one of these are the global ROM. Now, you can get this in the global ROM and maybe this too. But I have the Chinese ROM. Not an issue for me. I get 5G service on both of these devices I can use them. I use them both on T-Mobile, and I get all of my notifications in real time. So no no issues at all when it comes to connections. Now it's not um, you can't use it on all carriers. That's the advantage Google, Apple, and Samsung have in this country is that you can use them on all carriers. But if you're a T-Mobile, you're a GSM, you can definitely use these devices. Now the reason why I'm saying all that is to say this. Y'all just don't understand how you're getting way more phone through other companies than you are with, with, with Samsung. Now, I know Samsung gives you a ton of features. I understand that probably less than half of us don't even use all those features. Now, I use a lot of them, but I don't use them all because a lot of them I don't need. They don't, they're just not something I need to use. But I like the fact that they're there. But when it comes to overall value... When it comes to the build, when it comes to performance, when it comes to the cameras, when it comes to the charging speeds of the battery and battery life, y'all just don't understand. And the audio, y'all don't understand how awesome these devices are. You just don't understand. I, 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 I've done a lot of videos on the Mi 11 Ultra. I haven't did a lot on the Mi 10 Pro. I've done a few, but I've done a lot on the Mi 11 Ultra. This device, I'm telling you, you can stand up with any device that's coming out this year any of them i don't care what ultra it is it could be the super ultra this device is going to be able to hold its own against any new device on the market but let me tell you why the mi 11 was a great upgrade from the mi 10 pro this was my first xiaomi device and i absolutely loved it and i still love it okay but why the mi 11 ultra is they just took it to a whole nother level. Okay. Now, first thing is the price. So for some weird reason, this phone is still expensive. Now, the lowest I've seen it for was 900 bucks. I mean, unless y'all can find it for cheaper. I don't know why it's still that expensive. This device is two years old. You can find this one for like 630 bucks on Giztop. So I don't know why this phone is much older than this phone and it's so much more expensive. I don't get it. And this is an ultra device. This is just a pro model. So first thing is worth it when it comes to the price. Now, when it comes to the design, of course, this is all going to be subjective. I love this, divine, this divi um, design of the Mi 
I love an Ultra. I love that secondary display. I love the look. Because you ain't going to find no other phone out there right now that looks like this. You ain't going to find nobody else walking around with this device. This one looks a little different. You know, the design is okay. But the build quality on this phone is ridiculous. Now, when it comes to the build quality, the build quality on both of these phones is ridiculous. I mean, it's so good. This has a nice thickness to it. Both of them have a nice thickness to it. But you have Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back with the Mi 10 Pro. And you have Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and a ceramic back. So both feel super premium. I can't pick one over the other because they both feel awesome when it comes to build quality. Okay? When it comes to button placement, button placement is excellent on both because they're both on the right-hand side. However, when it comes to button placement, the buttons are a little lower on the Mi 11 Ultra than that of the Mi 10 Pro. As you can see there, if you're looking at it, Mi 11 Ultra is a little lower, and I like that. I like because it's very easily reachable. Now, <clears throat> biometrics, they both have excellent biometrics. I'm talking about, you know, face unlock, because I could do it right behind the camera, and it ain't going to be a problem. You can't do that with Samsung devices. This, this is not going to happen. Look how fast that is. That is just crazy. I don't have no Samsung device that opens up that fast with face unlock. Let me show you on the Mi 10 Pro. Same thing. It's instant. Now I pressed it too fast to open up to the camera. But you see how fast this is. Every time I try to do this with a Samsung device, it won't open at all. So the face unlock is unbelievable. Okay. Low light, no light is going to work. <laughs> Unlike the Pixel 7 Pro that's having issues with low light. No, this is going to work in complete darkness. The face unlock is going to work in complete darkness. I know because I tried it. Okay. Now, with the fingerprint sensor, let me turn both of these back off. I love the fingerprint sensor. Now, I like it a little bit more on the Mi 10 Pro only because the animation is so much, so much more dramatic. Like, you see that swirl? It's just more dramatic. See, it's just so much bigger and brighter. I love that. I mean, that is just cool. Let me show you how it looks on the Mi 10. I mean, the Mi 11. It's there, but see, it's not as pronounced. See, it's not as big. It's there. You can, And both have haptic feedback, but you can barely see it in animation. It, you know, you, it's there, but you can barely see it. It's so much more noticeable on this phone. You can see how big it is. Look at that. I love that. Samsung has nothing like that. Nothing like that at all. And it works great. It works great on both. So when it comes to the biometrics, both are great. So there's no problem. So they're pretty even when it comes to biometrics. Okay. All right. Now, the, the size of the display and the display, the display quality, excuse me. So you have a 1080p Super AMOLED display and you have a Quad HD display. So 6.67 inches, 6.8 inches. Okay. 120 hertz, 90 hertz. 1700 nits peak brightness. 500 nits peak brightness. But... I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. When you look at both of these, this does not look like no 500 nits peak brightness. This looks way brighter than that. And of course, this is 1700 nits peak brightness. This thing get crazy bright. You're going to get a great display on both of these. But keep in mind, you are getting a quad HD plus display with HDR10 plus. So you're getting a better display with the Mi 11 Ultra. But you'll love the display quality of the Mi 10 Pro as well. Keep in mind, this is a slightly smaller device too, a little more compact. This is a bigger device at 6.8 inches. But when it comes to display, the better display is on the Mi 11 Ultra. Now, both come with 12 gigs of RAM. Now, RAM management has been improved 
on the Mi 11 Ultra when I just got updated to MIUI 14. So the RAM management is not as aggressive as it was before. Now, is it is it quite as good as Samsung's? Not quite as good as Samsung, but way better than what it was before. Before, it wouldn't hold any apps open in the background. It was constantly refreshing everything. So the MIUI 14 update definitely helped when it comes to RAM management, but both come with 12 gigs of RAM. Also, both of these have 512 gigs of storage. So for that person that's not quite a storage monster like me, 512 really is not enough, but I can live with it as opposed to 256. I can live with 512. So both have 512 gigs of, of storage capabilities. So that's good. And that's for some people that's going to be like an unlimited storage. Next, both have an IR blaster. Okay. Now I don't have the IR blaster set up on this. I don't think. No, I do. I got my Samsung TV. And I got it back here on this one. And I got four TVs hooked up on this one. But also, when you click on that, you see it's not just about TVs. Okay, it's about way more than TVs. Both. Now, this one has a little bit more because it's a newer model. But you can see it's not just about the TV. So both have an IR blaster. This is something that Samsung used to put on their devices. Um, the last device they had it on was the Note 4. And they removed it. Next, with the Mi 11 Ultra, you're getting IP68 water and dust resistance. With the Mi 10 Pro, you're getting no water resistance and dust resistance at all. But I will tell you, now I've never gotten this phone wet, but when it comes to dust, no issues whatsoever. This phone at one point had sat around and I hadn't used it for months on end. I took it out and zero problems with performance, zero. But you do for that for that person that needs peace of mind, you'll get it on the Mi 11 Ultra IP68 water and dust resistance. All right, let's talk about battery life. Now, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, it's crazy. And I'm gonna say this, but I'm just keeping it keeping it 100. I get an hour, I mean a day and a half with both devices. Now that seems a little weird, but I'll explain why it kind of makes sense. Okay. I'm I'm the type of person I'm using my phone at a hundred percent brightness on both devices. I do that on all my devices. hundred percent brightness. I got the always on display on 24-7. I'm using everything pretty much at max. <laughs> I'm telling you. I really do. I use as many features as possible. I'm using everything. Okay. Now Hour, I mean, a day and a half with both the standby time on both. Excellent. So you're not you're going to love the battery life. Now, your everybody's battery life is going to vary depending on how you use your phone. I don't game. I'm just YouTube, social media, Spotify, surfing the net, watching movies. You know, that's that's how I that's how I use my phone for the most part. Okay, I don't play games at all. At all. On phones. But for that person that don't, even if you do, you'll probably still get really, you'll get through a day easily. But I'm a day and a half on both of these. So great battery life on both of these devices. Let's talk about charging speeds. Now, both of these devices charge really, really fast. You got 50 watt super fast charging on the Mi 10 Pro. And you got 67 watt wired charging on the Mi 11 Ultra. Both can charge from zero to 100% in under an hour. This is 36 minutes. This is like in, I think, 39 or 40 minutes. But both are super ridiculous, ridiculously fast. Unlike Samsung with their 25 watt or 45 watt charging, both of these phones blow that phone out of the water when it comes to charging. You may say, well, 67 watt, 50 watt is going to make uh, cause the battery to degrade. It is not true. That's all caps, okay? I'm still getting a day and a half of battery life using this phone full, using both of these devices full throttle with 5G services. So that is not true. And I've charged both of these devices countless times. 
and there is no degradation on either of the batteries. So for those of you that believe that all this super fast charging is going to destroy the battery is not true. I've had this for over two years. I've had this for well over a year. Going on two years with this one. So that is not true. So that's not something you should be concerned about. All right. Now, what's cool about this also, you get 30 watt wireless, fast wireless charging on the Mi 10 Pro and 67 watt wireless charging on the Mi 11 Ultra. So the wired and the wireless charging on the Mi 11 Ultra is the same. But the wireless charging only charge, only takes a few more minutes fat, uh, slower than that of the wired. So 36 minutes with the wired, 39 minutes with the wireless. That is crazy. Samsung can't touch this phone when it comes to battery charging speeds at all. 50 watt wired on the Mi 10 Pro, 30 watt super fast charging on the wireless. Still under an hour on both when it comes to wireless charging and wired charging. 10 watt reverse wireless charging on the um yes, on the Mi 10 on the Mi 10 Pro. Yes. 10 watts, okay? 10 watts on the Mi 11 Ultra. So the charging speeds on this device and the battery life on this device is awesome. No issues whatsoever. Both come with dual stereo speakers, okay? Harman Kardon and Dolby Atmos with this one. Now I'ma say this, the speakers on this device, cause Flossie Carter was bragging about it uh, when he did his full review on his phone. He was not lying. These speakers were ridiculous. These were the best sounding speakers that I ever heard on any phone until I got to Mi 11 Ultra. The full stereo sound with the bass, not the loudest, but just overall sound quality blew me away. Blew me away. Then when I put in my USB Type C headphones and used that that 30 that um, 24 bit DAC, blew me away. These speakers just took it to another level. I mean, you got the, the full stereo sound and they even lot like they just for loudness, they blow these out of the water. But both excellent sound quality, but these are just so much louder. And, you know, also the 24 bit audio sounds great. Just great. The audio on these both these devices are phenomenal. Now, when it comes to performance, Mi 10 Pro Snapdragon 865, Mi 11 Ultra, Snapdragon 888. It doesn't matter what Snapdragon, honestly, it don't matter. In some instances, this phone actually seems like it opens up apps faster than the Mi 11 Ultra. I'm serious. And you got a newer processor in the Mi 11 Ultra. But some, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you no lie. Sometimes it seems like this phone is faster. But they are both super fast and super smooth. I have not had an issue with the software on either one of these devices since day one. Both operate like they're brand new devices. So y'all don't have to be afraid to try something different other than Samsung and Apple and Google. Try something different. You're gonna love this. I'm telling you, you're gonna love this device. these devices. They're awesome. Take it from me, just try one. Pick up one, try it. If you don't like it, send it back. But you should at least try it. Don't let, you know, software, or oh, it's not getting updates. Yes, both get updates. Now, this one has gotten, you know, it's not getting any more. Anymore. Um, I think it's still getting a little bit more security updates. This one still got a few more years of security updates. And it just got uh, updated to MIUI 14. I believe it's going to get MIUI 15. So software is not a problem. Performance is not a problem. Both of these are crazy fast, crazy smooth. And when it comes to the camera, of course, on the Mi 10 Pro, you're getting a 108 megapixel with laser autofocus, optical image stabilization, 12 megapixel telephoto, dual pixel with two times optical zoom and 50 times digital zoom and an eight megapixel telephoto with optical image stabilization, 3.7 times optical zoom, five times hybrid zoom, and a 20 megapixel ultra wide. 
Now you get a 20 megapixel wide front facing camera and the rear cameras shoot in 8K at 30 frames per second, 4K at 60, and the front facing camera shoots at 1080p at 30 frames per second. That's the only thing that's disappointing that disappoints me with this device is that there's no 4K at 30 or 60. And the 10 and then 1080p is not even at 60, just 1080p at 30. So that's disappointing, especially with this calling itself a pro device. <coughs> Excuse me. But the quality of the video when you do shoot at two, uh, 1080p at 30 is great. It really is. So you're getting two telephoto lenses on the Mi 10 Pro. Now, when it comes to the Mi 11 Ultra, you got a 50 megapixel wide dual pixel with laser autofocus, optical image stabilization, 48 megapixel periscope telephoto with optical image stabilization, five times optical zoom, and 120 times digital zoom. <laughs> 120 times digital zoom. Now, I've zoomed up as much as 30, and I think as much as 50, and I still got, um, I still got a decent photo. Even zooming in at 50 times, I still got a decent photo. So, the 100, 120 times is not crap. It's not. It's awesome. Like, if I wanted to see the moon, it's going to take a great moon shot. It ain't going to be no problem. But the camera on both of these is great. Now, let me finish. 20 megapixel wide front facing camera. Rear camera shoot at 8K, 24 frames per second. Now, I don't know why they went from 30 frames per second down to 24 frames per second when it comes to 8K. That didn't make any sense to me. I didn't understand that. Especially seeing that this was an ultra device. So why would you take that down? That that confused me. All right, but you can shoot at 4, 4K at 60 and 1080p at 60. And with the front facing camera, you can shoot at 1080p at 60. So there's no 4K on this, which it should have been. For some reason, I don't know why Xiaomi just don't want to put 60 frames per second. I mean, 4K um, on their um, devices. I don't know. I don't understand it. I mean, the 13 Pro that just came out, still no 4K on the front facing camera. So I don't know what it is about them, why they don't want to put any, make their front facing cameras 4K compatible. Not the biggest deal for me, but it's a disappointment, especially, um, you know, depending on the price. Now with the 13 Pro, I think it's only 800 bucks. Not a big deal. But this, when this came out, this was like over $1,300. Now, I didn't pay that for this, but this was expensive. And there's no way something calling itself Ultra shouldn't have had 4K at 60 on the front-facing camera. No excuse for that. All right. Now, so when it comes down to both, when it comes to the camera, they're great on both. But the cameras are definitely superior on the Mi 11 Ultra. So at the end of the day, the Mi 11 Ultra was a great upgrade from the Mi 10 Pro, but the Mi 10 Pro, even to this day, can hold its own against the Mi 11 Ultra. It's just missing a few things, like Quad HD, IP68 water and dust resistance, you know, stuff like that. Just a, just a few things, not a lot of things. You know, 90 hertz as opposed to 120 hertz, you know, things like that. The speakers are just l way louder than this one over here. You know, the screen is brighter on the Mi 11 Ultra, not as bright. So it's just a few things, but it's not a ton of things like you would think. Now, both, I wish they were unlocked for all carriers. I wish both had a headphone jack. I wish both offered um, expandable storage. And I, both, and I wish both had 4K capabilities on the front-facing camera. But you can't go wrong with either one of these devices. They're both are great devices. Please stop being afraid to try something different. Like I did try Apple. I did. I bought a, a, a um a Apple a iPhone 8 Pro. I tried it. It I just couldn't I couldn't do anything with it. I mean, I hate the software. <laughs> I just hate I hate being restricted, restrained. I can't set up my home screen the way I want. It's just so it's just too restrictive for me. But I tried it. I did try it. Try the Xiaomi, I'm telling you. Samsung's not the only big dog out there. Now, I know their phones are more suited for North America. I understand that. 
But honestly, when you start using this, the MIUI is not that big of a deal. Honestly, it's not. It really isn't. Like I said, the Chinese software never gets in my way, never gives me any issues. The phone gets updated. The performance is great. Battery's great. Audio is great. Build quality is great. IR blaster. I mean, both of these got so much going for it. You're missing out. Just settling for Samsung, Apple, or Google. You're missing out. All right, so thank you for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. Hope, hope everybody out there is staying safe, staying well, and I'll check you guys out in the next one. Peace.